Welcome to Women's Leadership Today. I'm your host, Michelle, where I bring you the latest in leadership skills and expertise. Today, I'm happy to have with us Ellie Nieves. Ellie is an attorney and vice president and counsel of government affairs for a Fortune 250 company, where she provides strategic advice to the CEO and senior management on relevant legislative and political issues. She is also a founding member of the company's Diversity and Inclusion Council and launched the company's first employee resource group for women. In addition, Ellie is a women's leadership speaker, writer, and coach, and the founder and president of Leadership Strategies for Women, LLC. Thank you for joining us today, Ellie. Great to be here, Michelle. Well, Ellie, to get us started, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your journey to get to where you are today? Sure, absolutely. I actually launched my career as a young uh, lawyer in New York City politics. And I found during my time in politics that I was often the youngest and many times I was the only woman that was sitting at the table. Mm -hmm. uh, I managed to succeed through a lot of hard work and persistence. And over time, as I was getting ahead in my career, a number of women would approach me and ask me how I was doing it. So I found myself mentoring a lot of other young women in politics. And that was about the time when coaching became a thing. And when I learned about coaching, I went off, I got certified and decided that this was something that I could do is to help women to show up, speak up and step up in their careers. And it's become a passion of mine to be able to help women and give them the tools and the techniques that they need to be able to get ahead. That sounds like leadership and mentoring becomes second nature to you. Absolutely. It's something I really, really enjoy. Well, wonderful. Well, our thing for this month is trust. And can you tell us why trust is so much so important for women in the per workplace today? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that trust is really at the heart of career advancement. Getting ahead in your career really means that you are entrusted with greater responsibilities, that you've earned the trust of those who are above you, hopefully your colleagues as well, mm -hmm. and that people can see you as somebody that they can foresee as a leader that when you lead, that they listen, that they trust that you are going to direct them in the, in the right direction. And all that comes with being able to establish trust. Trust is very, very important. And it's really, as I mentioned, at the heart of career advancement. Well, and with that, how does one go about laying the groundwork for building trust with, with those they work with? So I think one thing that we as women are really good at is to uh, deliver good on your work product, right? Mm -hmm. That's the one thing that I think we're always very clear on that we need to deliver on our work product. That is basic. It's fundamental. It's foundational. We need to make sure that whatever responsibilities that we're given and are assigned to us that we follow through on a consistent basis. And then uh, the next step is really consistency. Mm -hmm. We have to do it over and over and over again to the point where it is second nature and that it's expected and that people know that you're always going to deliver. That's where the trust really comes in and knowing that you've delivered in the past, that you've done it consistently, and that you will do it again. And as you deliver good work product and as you do it consistently, you're exercising good judgment and good decision-making skills along the way. That's how people learn to trust you. That's how people who are watching to see who the rising stars within an organization, that's what they're looking for in terms of new leadership and who they're going to invest in and who they're going to sponsor to move forward. So really think about delivering consistently on good product, work, good work product, and then exercising good judgment and good decision making in the process. And I like your use of the word consistency. I think that is so important because building that trust is something that comes with comes over time, wouldn't you say? It's, like you said, showing up consistently, delivering quality work time and time again. Absolutely. And that's where we need to be patient as well as the people who are delivering on the work product and exercising the judgment and on the decision making. It's not just a one time deal. It's something that we have to do over and over again. And that is going to take time and you can accelerate it by actually taking on more responsibilities that provide you with visibility, mm. 
Otherwise, just waiting for those opportunities to come to you, they may never come. So it really is about raising your hand to take on new challenges, demonstrating that you're eager to take on those new projects, and then delivering on them time and again. And as you do that over time, people start to rely on you and start to trust in you. And they start to see that you are somebody who can be entrusted with more responsibilities and has a bright future ahead of them. I like hearing you talk about volunteering, you know, sort of raising your hand for more projects. And we've actually talked about that on past episodes. Um, we had a prior thing that was, which was initiative. And that was definitely a big part of it saying, yes, I will take on those extra tasks that may be outside of the scope of my current role. But I think that's so important that, um, that showing up, that, that stepping up for sure. And right. And that's really like a second part, right? Because you still have to deliver on your day-to-day responsibilities. Good point. And we need to, we need to make sure that we're able to manage our day-to-day responsibilities and that we can take on more. So we should never raise our hand to take on more if we don't have the capacity to, unless we've already delivered on what we're already expected to deliver. No, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's a very good point. It's so important, important to find that balance. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely don't take on Absolutely. more if you're not delivering on, <laughs> on your core, core pieces. Absolutely. And Ellie, what would you say if someone says perhaps uh, they've even lost some trust within an organization? Do you feel it's something that we can gain back if perhaps we made a mistake in the past, maybe we didn't handle situation uh, with the grace perhaps we could have? Is there something that we can do to re- repair that and get back that credibility? Absolutely. Uh, so the first thing is that you need to be able to acknowledge when you make a, a mistake. Okay. And you need to be able to acknowledge that mistake to those who were watching you make the mistake. Mm. Or if anybody was affected or impacted by the mistake, it's important that you acknowledge it. And then two, that you also articulate how you will change to make things better in the next go around. A good example is someone that I was coaching and she was having increasing uh, conflicts with a particular young woman who had just come into her department who was very eager, who was raising her hand, who was delivering on her projects, who was befriending her boss and was starting to get a lot of choice assignments. Mm -hmm. So this other person who had been in the department for quite some time was now feeling uh, jilted and feeling like she wasn't being tapped, but she also wasn't raising her hand. But what happened was it manifested into a bad attitude towards this young rising star. And then her boss started to take notice. And then in turn, the boss was now not looking at her favorably. Uh, It just became, it just spiraled into something where she just wasn't, she now wasn't performing well and she wasn't getting along with both her boss and this young woman in the department. And as we were talking and as she was sharing with me what her situation was, I suggested to her that she go to her boss and tell her that she was now getting coaching. Uh, It was something she was paying for out of her own pocket. It wasn't something that she had gone to her company for. And it was something that she needed to do to change her behavior and improve her performance. And, um, you know, I don't normally tell uh, clients to do that uh, if they are paying for the coaching out of their own pocket. And this is something that they've done out of their own initiative. But I thought it was something that needed to be done in this particular situation, because if something wasn't spoken or managed with her boss, it was just going to go down in the wrong. It was going to keep spiraling out of control. So that's what she did. She went back to her boss. She acknowledged that she had, uh, you know, started to develop a bad attitude towards her colleague and towards her boss and that she wanted to do something different and had now invested in coaching. And her boss looked at her favorably after that and thanked her for acknowledging uh, where she had gone wrong, told her, you know, I approve of the fact that you are now doing this to improve moving forward. And in fact, I will now pay for your coaching. Oh, wow. So it's one of those things where if we can acknowledge where we've gone in the wrong direction and we can articulate it and we can let the people know who are impacted and affected that we've done that, that at least creates an opportunity for us to come back and do better. But it's important that we deliver, that we deliver on the changed behavior, on the new action items that we're going to do to do differently. It's important that we demonstrate that we have changed and that things are going to be different moving forward. And that, again, comes with time and consistency, right? So we're going to have to deliver over and over again on the changed behavior consistently. And then as people look back, 
not only do they look favorably on the fact that you were able to, you know, turn things around, but they see you as somebody who's coachable, somebody who's willing to learn, somebody who's humble. Those are all key leadership traits that we all need to be able to uh, learn and own if we want to move forward in our careers. No, I like that example you shared. She certainly demonstrated that she was committed to the change, owned up to it, and how she could turn that around. So that's definitely a, a great example. And I've also heard you talk about the importance of self-promotion. Why is this important and how does that tie in with trust, building trust? It's important that we talk about our accomplishments. Uh, you know, we often work in silos on a day-to-day basis. Our organizations these days have a lot of projects going on. There are multiple people vying for the attention of those who uh, have the responsibility of helping others get ahead in an organization. So we want to make sure that we're also seen and that we're heard and that we show up at the right time delivering on what is on our desk and then also on anything additional. And as we do that, it's important that we communicate it. Uh, we, we sometimes take for granted that our bosses know everything that we're doing on a day-to-day basis. They don't, you know, unless they're sitting right there at your desk, especially now if you're working a, a hybrid situation or you're working fully remotely, there's nobody sitting at your desk monitoring all the work that you're doing on a day-to-day basis. And guess what? Your boss has their own responsibilities that they have to be preoccupied with throughout the day. So they're not necessarily worried about every every move that you're making in your day to day job. So it's important that when you have your one on ones with your boss or even during your mid year review or your annual review, that you sit down and that you talk about those things that you delivered on. And if you accomplish something in particular that um, that you had set a goal for in the beginning of the year that you talk about that you talk about one accomplishing it but then two, how you accomplished it, especially if you encountered difficulties along the way. And this is not about griping or about complaining about the difficulties that Mm -hmm. you encountered. It's more about detailing how it was that you went about getting to your goal despite any obstacles that presented themselves. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? It's important because oftentimes in order to accomplish uh, accomplish something, sometimes we run into challenges with other individuals, Sometimes we run into budgetary items. We don't have enough money in a budget to make a project, uh, make it come to fruition, or we might not have enough resources at our disposal. But it often takes a level of creativity. It takes people management skills, relationship skills. It takes financial management skills in order to overcome those challenges. And it's important that you share that along the way. So again, not as a way to complain about what it was that got in your way at the moment, but how you got over the hurdle in order to still make your goal a reality. Because you're demonstrating that you have leadership skills that are necessary in order to get things done. And that's important if you're interested in getting promoted or going to another space in your career. And what do you say to women that might say, well, I want to highlight my accomplishments and what I've done, but I also don't want to come across as bragging. Because I know I've that's something that I've heard women uh, demonstrate concern about. Do you ever hear that? And what is your response? Absolutely. And I don't think that self-promotion in the workplace and the way, at least the way I think about it, is bragging. We should never brag. I think everyone knows what a braggart sounds like and nobody likes it, right? So if you know what somebody who's bragging sounds like and you don't like it, then the first step for you in learning how to self-promote is to say, I don't want to sound like that. (laughs) So that's number one. Uh, And uh, it's interesting that we're talking about this because just a few weeks ago, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal that talked about the best way to brag about accomplishments. Now, again, I don't like the word brag, (laughs) but this was used in their title of their article. And really for me, it's the best way to self-promote about your accomplishments is to not take all of the credit. You wanna make sure that when you come across and you talk about your accomplishments, that you also give credit to other people who helped you along the Mm -hmm. way. So make sure that you give other people their shout outs and that you also acknowledge the work that you're doing. So for example, let's say that you led a team and that it was your vision, and that you put everybody together in order to accomplish that vision, it's great to say, 
you know, I'm really uh, happy that I had this great accomplishment, but I would have never been able to do it without Mary, John, Mike, and Peter. You get what I'm saying? So that's the kind of thing we have to do. We have to go in there, acknowledge that we played a crucial role, acknowledge the role that you played, and make sure that you acknowledge other people who came along in the journey with you. And to me, that seems like such an important part of building that trust too. If you're sharing that recognition, uh, that credit with your your peers and others, then they're going to have that trust in you on future projects, I'm sure. Absolutely. And people will want to work with you. And that is super Mm. important. What I find is that if you don't give other people credit when they work on projects with you and you take all the credit for yourself, when they show up for the next assignment with you, they show up half-hearted. They don't give 100% because they think that they're going to do all the work and then you're going to walk away with all the credit. So it's important that when it's time to dish out the credit and to divvy out the, the stars, that you share those stars with everybody else because you want them to show up full hearted to the next project so that they are fully committed to the same vision that you're committed to on the next project. And that's also where you can establish that good rapport, that collaboration and that excitement for projects. Absolutely. And Ellie, what would you say is the greatest challenge women face when establishing trust and credibility? And also have you had your own challenges in this area? I think uh, the first challenge that most women have is just the the lack of being strategic. Mm -hmm. And it's the reason why I named my company Leadership Strategies for Women, because I found that uh, we don't spend enough time strategizing about how we're going to move forward. And when I talk about being strategic, it's about looking at the full picture before we even act really thinking about outcomes, really thinking about how we can start setting things in motion so that when we want to accomplish something, we can have all the pieces in place as we move forward. So being strategic, I think, is super important. And it's very important when it comes to building relationships and building trust and building credibility over time. Definitely. Well, and and have you faced any challenges yourself in this area along your career path? Sure. I think when I first started um, in politics, uh, really that that time in my career was very foundational. And I mentioned that it was really what led me to go into coaching Mm -hmm. and to speaking eventually because I learned so many lessons uh, in politics. There's so much there about leadership that you have to learn, about promoting yourself, about speaking truth, about advocating for yourself in that space. And one of the things that I needed to learn was, you know, how do I, how do I develop a personal brand? I was very young. As I mentioned uh, at the time, I was in my 20s. I uh, also needed to develop a brand for myself, needed to learn how to advocate for myself and how to stand out in a crowded field where a lot of people were vying for attention. Mm-hmm. And, and when you're young and you've got so many... Uh, older men sitting at the table, you're not always looked at as someone who's credible. So one of the things that I needed to do was build that credibility. And building that credibility really came with me showing up differently to work every day, you know, showing up with a level of maturity and speaking up on a regular basis and being strategic. I needed to stop and say to myself, how can I earn credibility at this table? And it meant that I needed to dress different in that particular situation. It doesn't mean that this is applicable to everybody's situation, but in that situation, it meant I was going to show up to work every day wearing a suit. And believe it or not, as I did it, you know, the first couple of times I did it, it kind of raised a couple of eyebrows because I used to show up to work business casual. But when I started showing up with a suit, people looked at me a little differently. And then as it happened day over day over day, you know, and I did it consistently, then it just became part of my brand, Mm -hmm. right? The way I was showing up to work every day. And then I learned how to speak up at meetings and not sound tentative, but sounding like I was making an affirmative statement, not like I was afraid to say something or make a, or, or like I was asking something. And that took time as well and practice. And uh, also uh, showing up, not just identifying challenges, because I can tell you now, and I bet you can tell me every day you show up at work, you can identify a challenge in the workplace. Mm -hmm. We can all do that. But we need to move beyond just identifying the challenges. We need to be able to identify it, come up with a solution, 
and then be ready to own the solution, to ride it out and to actually be the person that Hmm. corrects the issue. And I found myself doing that time and again, finding that where there was an issue and then saying, hey, uh, I see this as an issue and I think that this is the right plan of attack. And by the way, I'm raising my hand. I want to be the one to solve this, this situation. And the more I did that consistently, the more I became known as somebody who was trusted, who was a problem solver, who was forward thinking, and who was come, you know, was showing up every day willing to take on more. And, uh, you know, it, it, over time, uh, it just became part of my brand. And it's been embedded in the way that I work even now, even today as a lawyer at a Fortune 250 company, I do exactly the same thing. I'm strategic. I look forward to, uh, you know, mapping out what the next steps are going to be. If I have a goal, I raise my hand on a regular basis, but I don't take on more than I can if I already have a lot on my plate on my regular day-to-day job. Yeah, and that goes back to that balance we were talking about earlier. But I really like your example of um, kind of rebranding yourself. You wanted to change that image to step up that credibility and how you were seen. And it sounds like that's something that women at all stages in their careers could do if they went to reposition themselves or uh, step up that trust or that credibility. Is that something that you think we can do it at any time in our careers? You can do it at any time. It's really important, again, to to be strategic. We need to think about where we currently are. There there needs to be a level of Mm self-awareness for us to look at where we currently are, ask ourselves the hard questions. Why are we where we are? How do we think about ourselves and our performance? How do others think about us and our performance? It's important to do a 360 evaluation at whatever step you can. Find out what people above you think, your colleagues, people below you, and then take the feedback constructively. A lot of us don't like to uh, ask for feedback. We don't like to hear feedback. We're uncomfortable with feedback. But the reality is, is do you really want to continue to move forward in a situation where you're blind? And you're making the same either mistakes or showing up in, the, in a way that you didn't intend to show up on a regular basis? Of course you don't, uh, especially if those things are holding you back in your career. You would want somebody to tell you and make you aware. So it's important that we be open to critiques and not think of them as something that's negative, but that we actually welcome them because it's only through that feedback that we can make adjustments that make us better and can help us to improve our performance over time. So those can definitely help us with opportunities. We can look at those as opportunities rather than, than critiques and definitely opportunities to, yeah. to grow. And that perspective is so important because it's one thing to judge your own performance, but to hear it from, like you said, your peers, those above you, those perhaps that report directly to you, it really gives us a whole new perspective for sure. Yes. And Ellie, you gave us a lot of great information today. And as we wrap up, what would be maybe your top, you know, two, three, four suggestions uh, for women wanting to build trust, um, build that trust others have in them, and, you know, maybe also things that they can do to have more trust in, in others? So I, I would urge all women to think of every assignment that they take on as a test. And that there are others looking at you to see if you're going to pass. So, uh, you know, again, this it, it all goes back to what we talked about before, that whole consistency and doing things over time. So if you think of every assignment as a test that you must pass, then you're going to put your heart into studying, which is really preparing to do well in that assignment. So as we consistently do well to pass the test, And as we consistently pass the test and then show up prepared to talk about how we've passed it, not in a way to complain about the challenges that we overcame, but to help people see the skills that we bring to the table on a regular and a consistent basis that basically are are needed in order to be able to overcome challenges and to demonstrate that we have uh, strong leadership also at our our, uh, disposal. And then again, um, always understanding that We can't build credibility in a vacuum. We have to engage with other people on a regular basis for them to see how we're doing and for us to build trust. Mm -hmm. Uh, Women 
typically don't like to network. So I urge you to go out there and build relationships across your organization at all levels, but be strategic about building those relationships. And those are the relationships that you need to continue to build and demonstrate your leadership abilities to. And again, over time, as you continue to uh, deliver on your projects and continue to share in the accolades when it's time to self-promote, uh, you'll build trust and credibility over time. Well, I think those are some uh, great takeaways from today's talk for sure. And Ellie, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Michelle. It's been a great pleasure too. Oh, thank you. And I'd like to also thank our listeners. This is Women's Leadership Today. You can now watch us on YouTube and listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and pretty much anywhere podcasts can be found. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe today. And you can follow along with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening. Progressive Women's Leadership is passionate about providing the best tools to help you reach your fullest potential. Visit us today at progressivewomensleadership.com for access to workshops, articles, e-guides, and much more to help you further develop your skills and advance 